you've learned about Future First from a practical perspective in the main training course video. But what about the science? You may think that science would find this idea antithetical to everything it stands for. After all, scientists are out to leverage what they can learn from the past to create models for the future. You could say their job depends on past-based paradigm. But that's why these experiments are so interesting and thought-provoking. So let's dig into it. Many of you will have heard of the famous double slit experiment, but for those of you who have never heard about it or need a refresher, this experiment was first done in 1801 by physicist Thomas Young, hoping to resolve the millennial old argument over whether light was a wave or a particle. To do this, he used a barrier with two slits in it and placed a target behind that barrier. He used a light source to shoot a beam of light at the barrier and then looked at the pattern on the target behind. The theory was, if light was a particle or made up of tiny bits of matter, then when you shot it at the two slits, you'd expect the pattern to show up on the target exactly the same as if you shot a bunch of pellets at it. You'd have two groupings on the target behind the slits, one grouping for each of the slits where the particles made it through. But if it was a wave, then when shot from the source, it would hit the two slits and each slit would create a new wave on the other side. These two waves would meet and where the tops of one wave would hit the tops of the other, the amplitude would double, and where the top of one wave would hit the bottom of the other, they would cancel out. In this case, the target would show what's known as an interference pattern. This is a pretty simple and quite clear method to solve this argument. When it was done with light, an interference pattern showed up and the debate about light was over. It was obviously a wave. In 1927, they tested it with electrons, things known to be tiny bits of matter, and this is where it gets a bit strange. The electrons, even when shot out of an electron gun one at a time, created an interference pattern on the target. How could it be that electrons, tiny bits of matter, could act like a wave? Scientists decided to see if they could solve this mystery, so they put a measurement device on the backside of the double slit to see which slit the electrons went through. When they did the experiment again, the interference pattern on the back wall stopped being created, and the electrons hit the target acting like a particle, only showing two groupings as if they were little pellets. Yeah, that's right. When you don't observe the electron, it goes through the slits as a wave and interferes with itself and creates an interference pattern. But if you have a look, the wave collapses and it turns into a particle. Now this has been tested with electrons, whole atoms, and even molecules as large as 800 atoms, all with the same outcome. So what does this mean? Well, though lots of people have been theorizing about what it means for us in our everyday lives for decades, what I can say for certain is that matter exhibits characteristics that are both wave and particle-like. The wave suggests potential positions of the particle, but when we want to find the actual position through observation, we turn the potential position into an actual position which shows up as a collapse of the wave. It's strange, but an important phenomenon, and the first piece of the puzzle that you need to know about before we can get into the quantum eraser and know how this suggests future first is a viable way to consider how time works inside our universe. But before we get there, the second thing we need to discuss is quantum entanglement, or what Einstein called spooky action at a distance. This is a phenomenon where two particles can be created in a way where, when you observe one of them, for example through a property called spin, the other immediately becomes the opposite. They're somehow entangled together. This would be like if you and a friend were each flipping a coin at your respective houses, and every time your coin turned up heads, your friends would automatically and consistently turn up tails. Every time. Einstein called this spooky because, theoretically, you could take one of these entangled particles to the other side of the universe while keeping the other safely back at home on Earth, and if you measured your particle here on Earth, you'd instantly change the one on the other side of the universe, which seemed to suggest faster-than-light communication, a big no-no in Einsteinian physics. Now, if you're a big follower of astrophysics, you'll know that space and time are intimately related through Einstein's theory of relativity. So for those people, you should be in great suspense about where we're going to go next. And if you're not aware of where we're going, well then, prepare to learn something pretty cool. Now that we have both the double slit experiment and quantum entanglement behind us, we can get into the last experiment, the one that I think puts a serious question in the concept of determinism as the rule for how our universe works, also known as past-first thinking. This experiment is called the quantum eraser and still baffles our best minds. As the famous physicist and Nobel laureate Richard Feynman said, 
If you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. Which is why I don't ever say this is how it is, but instead do my best to lay out a case that I hope leads to interesting thinking. See, scientists decided to use the outcomes of both of the previous experiments to cheat the double slit experiment, to see if they could peek and measure the particle going through the slits without directly touching them. And you may have guessed, they decided to create entangled particles and send one of them through the double slit and the other to an observation device. They knew that changing one would instantly change the other, so they decided to let the first one go through the slits and hit the target behind, therefore registering it as a wave or a particle, and only after it hit, measure the second entangled particle. To make it a bit more complicated, they only recorded the observations of half of the particles, and they did it randomly by using a semi-transparent mirror that would only allow about half of the particles to reach the observation device. So when the entangled particles left the crystal, they couldn't have known whether one was going to be observed or not. This last step removed any possible bias by the scientist that could have been caused by knowing which particles were going to be observed beforehand. So what happened? Well, for the group of particles where the information was recorded, the sister particles had already registered on the target in the two-slit pattern. However, if the information was not recorded, then the sister particles had already hit the target, leaving an interference pattern. It was as if what was to happen in the future had impacted the past in the form of the wave collapsing or not. Future somehow seemed to come first. So, just as the double slit experiment showed us something fundamental about matter in our universe, basically that matter exhibits the properties of both waves and particles, could it be that the quantum eraser experiment tells us something fundamental about time? Maybe that past first is not the only way to consider time within our universe. With that, I hope you found this video extra interesting and that it provided you with a new set of questions to ponder. I'll put links to some of the scientific papers below for those who want to dig deeper, and until next time, best wishes on your journey and stay awesome.